Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wa salatu salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Okay, so uh, today I'm going to make the solution for the recursion exercises. Okay, and uh, as you know, you will have a similar exercise in the final exam. And in the previous lectures, I have introduced a few examples with recursion, so let me review that. So we did, uh, the first thing that we did was the factorial. Okay, so we calculated the factorial and uh, the factorial is the multiplication of different numbers from 1 until n. And we did this using a for loop. This is what we call the iterative function. And we use that also using a recursive function. So let me remind that for any recursive uh, problem, first of all, we need to find two things, the base case and the general case. So basically, we will give you a formula like this. Okay? And what you have to do, you have first of all to derive the base case, that is, okay, the, the case, for example, where n equal to 0 or n equal to 1, depending on the problem. So in, in this example, we can have base case 0 factorial equal to 1 or 1 factorial equal to 1. This is what we call the base case. The base case will help us to find the condition at which we have to stop the recursion. Otherwise, the recursive call is going to be infinite. That's why we need to have a stopping condition that will stop. And we already did this during the lecture. So you can come back to the video for more information about this. The second thing is to find the general case. The general case, it means uh, the function at the step n okay, must be expressed as a function of steps n minus 1 or n minus 2 or depending on the problem. So here we can see that if we look for 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 3 factorial, 4 factorial and so on, uh, for example, 3 factorial is equal to factorial of 2 multiplied by 3, 4 factorial is equal to factorial of 3 multiplied by 4, so we can derive that factorial of n is equal to factorial of n minus 1 multiplied by n. So this is the general case. And now if we find the general case in the base case, we need to translate this into Java. That's all the things we have to do. As you can see, uh, the recursive function will be making the base case if n equal to 0 return 1. Uh, if a uh, number equal to 1, we can also return 1. And then in the general case, it's going to be factorial of n will be equal factorial of n minus 1 multiplied by the number n. Okay. So same thing we did for the exponential function. Okay. And uh, yes, the, uh, we did also Fibonacci, but I'm going to jump for the exponential function. This is the general formula. Okay. is equal to x power 0 divided by factorial of 0 as x power 1 divided by factorial of 1 and so on. It's going to repeat indefinitely. So same thing. Now here we have a function x and it has two inputs x and n. x is the value we are going to evaluate. Okay. And n is the number of iterations. Okay. So we have two things here. So we do the same thing. So if we evaluate the exponential of x at step 0 is going to be equal to this one. We can evaluate at step 1 equal step 0 plus x power 1 divided by 1 factorial. So this is x0 plus x1 divided by 1 factorial. So we repeat for x at step 2, we will find it's equal x at step 1 plus this quantity. Same thing for x3. So we can derive the general formula as x e x at step n is equal at e x at step n minus 1 plus some quantity like this. So now we have everything. We have the base case n equal to 0. So if I replace n equal to 0 here, I will find uh, x power 0 equal to 1 and 0 factorial is equal to 1. So for n equal 0, the function will be evaluated to 1. This is the initial case. And this is what we will do. We do a recursive function. If n equal to 0, we return 1. 
because this is the base case and then we return e x n which is this one is equal to e x n minus 1 which is this one plus the following value okay so we're going to do this exactly the same thing for the three cases that we are going to solve right now okay so let's see here now we use Taylor series okay to write an approximation for the function fx 1 divided by x minus uh, x square and this is evaluated the following function so write the recursive function f double x n that provide an approximated value and we have to make sure that x is smaller than 1 so let's go step by step I'm going now to create a class okay recursive function one so I'm going to write the general formula first okay so how to solve this As usual, I'm going to try to find the base case and the general case. So the base case is simple. Now here n starts from 1. So I'm going to take n equal to 1. If you want to, to know from where to start, look at this index here. Okay. And then we will make for n equal to 1, f x 1 is equal to I replace n by 1, 1 multiplied by x power 0. So it's 1. Other? You understand how I did? So I replaced n by 1. It becomes 1 multiplied by x power 0. So 1 multiplied by 1. So I, I put here 1. So now I find my base case. Now I need to find the general case. For doing that, I need to start, okay, uh, f x2 let me write this one is equal to what I'm going to make this sum two times okay for n equal to 1 and for n equal to 0 so let me replace n by 1 it's 1 multiplied by uh, x power 0 plus so this is the first this is the first term and the second term here, I replace n by 2. So it's going to be 2 multiplied by x. That's it. So this term is what? Is fx1 sahwala. Okay, is equal plus this term. Voila. Okay, I can do for one more time. I can do f x3 is equal to so I will write the sign for three terms plus 3 multiplied by x power square so all of this here is what is this one okay so I'm going to make equal fx2 plus the new quantity and I can repeat this for 4, 5 and so on I can now derive for the general formula fxn this is what I want to calculate is equal to fx n minus 1 okay plus n multiplied by x n minus 1 I have everything now okay so now I go to do to do my recursive function I can do public static uh, double let me call it f 
it will take a double x and int n. Here we have something that we have to validate. You must make data validation. Okay. If math dot absolute value of x is greater than one, okay, throw new illegal. This is what it says. Argument exception. X must be smaller than one. Okay, so now we are sure that we have our data is valid. So I'm going to implement the base case. What is the base case now? If n equal equal to one, return one. General case, if uh, no general case, return f f x n minus one plus n multiplied math dot power x n minus one. And that's pretty much it. Yes. Okay. So you can see. Look, it, does, it didn't take even seven minutes, and I have explained and went step by step. So let me remind you for the nth time that what I did here is the most important. What the students are doing most of the time are jumping directly here, and they write anything that will not necessarily match the correct answer. Okay, so it's important to analyze very well and very carefully. And my recommendation is that you go and repeat these questions again, maybe look for other questions in order to practice about this. So I can now check, I can do a main function to check whether my function is correct or not correct. Public static void main ring arcs. Let me take, for example, uh, a double x equal 0 0.1. So 0 0.1 is in the correct range. I can take int n, for example, let me make 10 iterations. And let's print the, the real value s out real value of f. Okay which is equal plus uh, so it's equal to 1 divided by 1 minus uh, so math dot pow uh, 1 minus x and here 2 so this is the real value that you would like to calculate let's make now estimated value of f so uh, this is f 0 0.1 this is f 0 0.1 uh, for n equal to 10 okay so how, how do I do this I'm going to replace this by the function f is equal uh, 0 0.1 is for x and I will put 10 for the number of iterations this is, uh, okay, I can write x, yes. So you can write x, it's better. Sorry. And here I write n. Okay, so let me execute now. We can check whether you can see it's very close. Other. So you can see now if we reduce the number of iterations, for example, if I put n Five. equal to 3, for example, you will see that the gap will be more. Okay, we can calculate the error. Look, S out, error, yes. I can do here double real value, 
take one and I will take this one and I can make double estimated value and I will put this one and here I will put real value and here I, I will put estimated value and the error will be the real value minus the estimated value okay I can make math dot absolute to have it as positive so you can see the error now for 3 it's not that much but if we make for 10 okay 1 power minus 9 very very small error okay so this is the first exercise is it clear yes. so we're going to do another one about the cosine and you see that the principle will be exactly the same you know it doesn't matter which function we are going to calculate the principle is exactly the same okay so let me make another one it is called estimated cosine okay so as usual here I need to find the base case and I need to find the general case and then I will write my function okay so help me to do this what is the base case here Y n equals zero because here the sum starts from zero. Okay, so I'm going to do n equal to zero. Okay. So for n equal to zero, uh, let's see uh, f x n will be equal to. We replace this by zero. This is uh, power zero one. 2 0 factorial 1 and this is power 0 1 so fx is be equal, will be equal to 1 okay so for the general case here okay I'm going now to write f x n uh, 1 equal what so I'm going to make the sum from 0 to 1 so for n equal to 0, it's 1, plus, let me replace this by 1, this, this is going to be minus 1, divided by 2 factorial, multiplied by x power 2. So it's going to be, uh, so this is minus, or, or let's make it like this, plus minus 1, uh, divided by 2 factorial, and all of this, multiplied by x power 2 is it clear 2 n n is equal to 1 so this is equal to f x 0 plus this quantity okay let's do it another time for f x 2 it's equal to the whole sum, this sum plus, I'm going to replace now by 2. So minus 1 power 2 is going to be equal to 1 divided by 4 factorial. Okay. Multiplied by x power 4 so here is going to be equal to fx1 plus this quantity it's better that we make another iteration because we have minus sometimes it's positive sometimes it's negative so it's better to be careful in these situations so I'm going to write fx3 again 
which is equal to the whole thing here plus we replace by 3 so it's minus 1 power 3 it's minus 1 okay divided by uh, 6 factorial and all of this multiplied by x power 6 x power 6 which is equal to the quantity fx2 plus the last thing here so now let's derive the general case which is f x n it's equal to f x n minus 1 Sahula plus some quantity like this. So let's put the correct values, which is so this one is going to be one. minus one power n here. This is going to be two n factorial, and here it's power two. Okay, so now we have everything in place. I'm going to write my function public static double cosine. Uh, so it's going to take a double x and an int n. Is it clear until now? Okay, so I'm going to write the base case and the general case. Do I have data validation here? It says that x is any real number, so I don't have to do any any check. Okay, so now the base case, if n equal equal to 0, return 1. Okay, and then if uh, no, uh, then we return f x n minus 1 plus this quantity I need to write it carefully so I have uh, math dot pow minus 1 power n divided by uh, factorial I don't have factorial here, so I need to bring the factorial. Hmm? Okay, yes. But let me bring it here. I can bring the factorial here. So in this case, I will just call R fact of. 2 times n all of this be very careful for the parentheses okay otherwise it might be wrong uh, okay and then multiplied by uh, math dot power x and here 2 multiplied by n Okay, just to make sure that, and here it, it's cos. Okay, that's all. Now we can make a testing of this function, whether it is correct or not. So let's do public static void main string args. Okay, uh, let me take uh, double x. So uh, here it's going to work in radian, not in uh, degrees. So 90 degree is going to be 1.75, uh, 57. This is almost pi divided by 2. And int 
let me take small value first and then we can make double real value is equal to math dot cos okay okay math dot cos x this is the real value and double here estimated value is equal to math uh, is equal to uh, cos uh, x n okay so i can now show the real value real value equal plus real value and i will do the same thing for the estimated value <laughs> And finally, I will do for the error. Okay, so the error or estimation error will be equal to math dot absolute value of estimated minus or real minus estimated. The same thing is going to be absolute value here. Okay, now we can try to run this example here. Let me uh, remove this system that I don't print a length that I don't need for the moment. Okay, so you can see the error is very small. Yes, I think it, it seems it seems that it is taking uh, in uh, degrees. Let me write ninety here. Yes, point five. No, yeah. No, no, I think it's still Because we used the radians, it was uh, Yeah. Let me put. Let me put x equal to zero. Yes. It's correct. Uh, 3.14. It's minus one, yes. So it's working fine. It's in radian. For me, when I tried it, I uh, tried uh, uh, 32 uh, uh, iterations is the maximum possible. After that, it will give you infinity, then it will give you none. Mm. Okay. For the iterations. Uh -huh. Mm. Okay, now the last one, you can see we always follow the same process. Okay? So will it be the same way in the exam? Like, uh, similar, similar things, yes. Series and additional series. It's the same thing. Okay, so let's do the last exercise about the tan h function or inverse of tan h function. Okay, so let me create a class than H estimation. It's actually inverse tan. Yes. Okay, so here, using Taylor series, it's possible to write the approximation of this one which is equal to this sum and this one. So we will do the same thing. We will do the same thing. We start by the base case and then we have the general case. So what is the base case here? Why? So for n equal to 1, what is the value? You have here. Regularly, it's 1 divided by... Yes. Uh, what is 1 minus 1? 2 minus 1, 1. This is 1, and this is x power 1. So uh, it's this value, the first term here. Okay, uh, so it's equal to x. f 
x1 is equal to x and then we go for the general case so let me write f x2 is equal to x plus 1 divided by 3 multiplied by x power 3 which is equal f x1 plus this quantity here okay so now we do same thing f x3 is equal to this quantity plus 1 divided by 5 and here 5 is equal to f x2 plus this quantity here so I can now find the general case which is equal to f x f x n is equal f x n minus 1 plus I will take all of this here and replace this one by what is the value here 2n minus 1 okay be careful about and here x power 2n minus 1 like this okay so now we can do public static void in tan h of double x and int n is equal to what base case yes what is the base case here return now if n equal equal to 1 return x but in return do we have data validation here no return uh, it's a double it returns a double and here return if tan h of x n minus 1 plus I will take all of this here 1 divided by 2 multiplied by n factorial by n and here math the power x and here two times okay I don't know whether we have the value of uh, math dot we have tan h here